Hello friends, welcome to the video. In today's video, you will learn about Hibernate's optimistic locking, pessimistic locking, the version property, and what's the difference between optimistic and pessimistic locking. So locking is basically a way to ensure that multiple updates to the same data don't interfere with each other. So let's talk about optimistic locking. Optimistic locking is achieved using the version property. So generally we have the architecture where we have our application layer followed by the hibernate engine which interacts with the database. And suppose we have an entity class person which maps to the person table. It has two columns ID with the property ID and the name with the property string and it also has a version property annotated with the version annotation. Now suppose in a particular transaction say T1 we read this property. So Hibernate will give us the latest version of this property that it has with us. So suppose for example it returns us version 1. Now suppose in another transaction T2 we again read this property. Hibernate will again return us the latest version of this property that it has with us which is version 1. So now both the transaction T1 and T2 have version 1 copy with them. And now suppose transaction T2 tries to update this entity. As soon as it is able to successfully update the entity, Hibernate will update the version of this entity to version 2. Now suppose transaction T2 tries to update this property. First of all, Hibernate will check whether T2 has the latest version of this property or not. And since the latent version is 2 and T2 has the version 1, it will not allow T2 to update this entity. To solve this problem, what we need to do is we need to reread this transaction. And in this case, Hibernate will provide us the latest version of this entity, which is version 2. And then when we would try to update this property, and since now we have the latest version of this property, Hibernate will allow us to update this property and then update the version of this property also to the next, which is version 3. So this is basically optimistic locking where Hibernate is trying to maintain the locking at application level using the version property. So when we use the version property, optimistic locking is available to us by default. But there are other ways to request for it explicitly as well. For example, when we are using the entity manager.find method, passing it the person entity class reference and the person ID. We can additionally pass the lock mode as optimistic. Hibernate will read this entity with optimistic locking. Similarly, when we run a query here in this example, we are selecting a person by person ID. So we are passing the ID as a parameter into the query. We can also set the lock mode as optimistic and then you know get the results. So in this case also we are reading the person entity using the entity manager and then we can again explicitly set the lock mode as optimistic before doing further operations on this entity. Similarly, there are other ways as well to explicitly request for optimistic locking. Now let's talk about pessimistic locking. So this uses database level locks to achieve a more granular control over the shared data. Since this operates at the database level, there are two kinds of locks, exclusive lock and a shared lock. In a shared lock, connection apart from the owning connection can read the data but cannot write or delete the data. Whereas in case of an exclusive lock, the connection other than the owning connection can't even read the data, forget about writing or deleting the data. To support this behavior, Hibernate provides us with three kind of pessimistic locking modes, which is, you know, pessimistic read, pessimistic write, and pessimistic force increment. So whenever we wish to read the data, we should acquire the pessimistic read lock, which, you know, allows other connections also to read the data. But when we want to update the data or write the data or delete the data, in those cases, we should go with pessimistic write log which you know prevents other connections from reading the data for the time being when you are trying to either write to it or delete it. And we can use force increment which behaves pretty much like pessimistic write, but it also updates the version entity or the version property whenever we read the data. 
So here are few examples of how we can use pessimistic locking. So in this case, we are using entity manager dot find to find the person by person ID and we can give the lock mode as pessimistic read lock mode. Now in this case, we are creating a query and trying to select by person by person ID and passing the person ID as a parameter. We can pass the lock mode as well. And here we are passing, passing pessimistic write lock mode and getting the results. And after we have read the entity using entity manager, we can later on also set the lock mode as pessimistic force increment. So more or less optimistic lock mode is at the application level and pessimistic lock mode is more or less at the database level. So friends, thanks a lot for watching this video. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such videos and also press the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos.